Welcome back to Awake in Atlanta. I'm Tim Ray, your co-host, along with Shannon McVeigh. And Hello. we are back, 2020. Uh, 2020. Yeah, let's say that. Fat right? shaming up in here. <laughs> so, guys, listen, uh, we have a very special guest coming in, JQ Ellis. You know what? You're going to be very happy to hear about this. Not only she's a wellness guru, but she's also a uh, follower of Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. What do you think? Because I'm a follower. I love all followers. Just kidding. Of course I do. That's the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs> she's 23 years in the fitness industry, and we're here all about her and what she's up to, uh, and um, you know, and what's important in her life. Hello, JQ. Great to meet you. Good morning. Hey. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Th- good thanks morning. for coming on and sharing uh, and sharing your information because this is a tough topic to talk about because a lot of people. I mean, we fluctuate. I mean, almost everybody I know goes through this yo-yo experience. They're skinny, they're fat, whatever. Five and pounds is healthy to fluctuate, by the way. Okay. Just throwing that out there. Really? Let's find out. True. From okay. Thank you. All right. Damn. So, but, yes. but but often, you know, you get in relationships, and I tell you what, it's almost inevitable. Mm-hmm. It's almost inevitable that because you're in a relationship, I'm saying all, I'd say good <laughs> majority of them, you end up letting yourselves go to hell over a period of time. Both of you do. <laughs> So, um, for lack of a better word, what gives, what gives JQ? (laughs) Look, that's what we call life. And, um, I think that every person and how they handle situations like that, any kind of relationship up, down, in, out, good, bad, ugly, sad, um, is going to determine, first of all, your mental state and then your mental state and your environmental state, things that you choose are going to definitely affect you physically. And so, um, it all leads back to us. We all Yep. try to blame it on everything else around us. It's the choices that we make. Right. Well, you know, it's, sometimes it's easier, though, to to make unhealthy choices, right? Because it's comfort. Comfort? Yeah. That, but why do we get like that? Well, you know, yeah. Wait. I don't know if it's always comfort or if it's, um, you know, what we're used to. Well, I guess comfort would be a way of saying it because I just don't. I've been fat before, and when I was fat, I was not comfortable. <laughs> I just could not. I don't. I don't understand. I was not, um, you know, hot all the time. Fat role, self confidence. There's no comfort in that at all. But what we do get comfort comfortable with is our habits, and it's so hard to change. So we get comfortable doing things that are easy and um, tend to just let life go by us. Well, you know, I, I think. And by the way, I think your earpiece may be rubbing on something. Is that right, Waheed? Okay, yes, you may want to hold it or I think something's, yeah, something's rubbing on it. Okay, so you're coming a little bit choppy, but you're good now. So uh, when we get comfortable, I agree there's something to that, JQ. When we get comfortable, um, but I like, when I get depressed, kind of, I'm like Shannon. When I get depressed, I'll, I'll overeat or I'll go into my addictions, you know? Uh, hey, and, you know, don't say you're like me in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that crazy, but, uh, oh. but uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you know, but I, I will. I mean, I will. I, where some people, when they get depressed or anxious, whatever, they just shut down the, and they don't eat. They lose the weight. They look right. great, you know. So uh, I get what you're saying. But that's unhealthy, too. It, yes. uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. That's exactly. unhealthy, too. So any extreme, whether you're eating too much or you're eating too little. And some people's extreme is not even eating. For me, my extreme is not eating. A lot of my clients, believe it or not, their extreme is not necessarily eating. More times than none, it's not eating. And then it's body torture. Right. So they keep themselves from doing things that they even would normally do that are bad. And they do them to an extreme level. Uh, That's usually what the case is. Okay, we keep talking about fat. What is considered fat? Because some, I was saying earlier, people could say I'm fat and I don't feel fat. So what is considered fat? Uh, well, my doctor tells me I'm fat every time I see. Visit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, it's probably that's, fa- that's based on a chart. Yes. You know? Right. So um, I think the first and foremost, the definition of fat is when you look in the mirror, what do you see? And then second of all, healthy realms, healthy doesn't necessarily mean a number on a scale, but healthy means the quality of life. What are you doing with your life? Does your weight or your health keep you from doing things that you want to do? Those are all forms of unhealthy. But when it comes to fat, if we're talking about the scientific, it is subcutaneous stuff that's trapped in the body that's unhealthy. So all of us have some form of fat. And there are good fats and bad fats. Breast tissue is nothing but fatty tissue. It's great. I know men like it when we have lots of breast tissue. Right. Uh, booty. Every, booty tissue. Everybody yeah. wants booty. Yeah. <laughs> booty tissue. Bring, know, I mean, bring on the bring on the certain fat, I guess. And 
No, but Ray used to be buns of steel. Now that everybody wants apple bottoms. And oh, yeah. And a loosey goosey. And <laughs> That's so true. So I think it's, it's just preference, man. It's just preference. All right. So, so when does it become a preference and when does it become fat shaming? And I think the worst fat shaming happens is what we do to ourselves. And I, I think or, or unless you hang out with Tim Ray, and that's what he does I to you. I do not fat shame any, any <laughs> girlfriends I may have. Um, I, you, what you do, you, you do, you, you do, I think what we say to ourselves is the worst, you know, because um, cause a lot of us go with that yo-yo. We, you know, gain weight, lose weight. It's a constant battle, especially the older you get. You don't have that metabolism like you did when you were a teenager or in your 20s, you know? And uh, and so you, it's that battle. And not to mention... The food choices out there, uh, I mean, you walk into any supermarket, you got Twinkies, you got donuts, you got cookies, you got, I mean, it's just overwhelming. I mean, you Stay have to, on the perimeter. Yeah. So, yeah, so stay my, on the perimeter. That's a good job. So my question to you, JQ, is um, what do you do to your, what do you, what can you do for yourself to not fat shame yourself? Um, first of all, fat shaming is something that society standards and people have place into uh, mental circulation. I also think that fat shaming is, you are so correct that it starts within. Someone said something to us or somebody said something or about us and we decided to believe that. However, it becomes shame because we don't change the trajectory of what people are thinking. So again, that's us. People call me fat. People call me skinny. I lose weight. I gain weight. Fat shaming could be all extremes. There are people that are fat shamed that are smaller than you and I. Um, And so, again, it's about other people. And then I I did some research and fat shaming really is about the confidence of the person who's doing the shaming more than anything else. So they're trying to extend or transfer that negative energy to mm. someone else because they haven't dealt with the confidence uh, within their That self. makes sense. And yeah. let's point out that it could also go the other way, fat shaming and also skinny shaming. So there's a lot of people yeah. that I know that will cry because they're, they've they been told they were skinny their whole life. They hate that. They don't, so that's all I needed uh, to say. I, they, don't, I they don't have the booty. That, yeah, they don't have the booty. Or, you know, I really experienced a lot of shaming um, once I had cancer. And a lot of people did not know my story or my journey. They just knew me before cancer. And then, you know, two years later, I fell off the scene and then I came back and I was this 119 pound person from 169 pounds to 119 pound person. And the first thing when people started looking at me was, God, you're too skinny. Oh, are you sick? Oh, are you on drugs? Um, Or do you have an eating disorder or Mm. any of that? And so the shaming began just based on the assumption of what people thought was happening. And of course, internally, when you're going through something, whether it's cancer, depression, loss in the family or anything, when your mental morale is already down and you're in an emotional deficit, and then people begin to throw these things at you, if you're not strong enough internally within yourself or you don't have enough confidence in yourself, then you tend to take on that energy of the shame from other people. And then it goes too far. You start believing it in yourself. And then again, it starts a cycle. We hate ourselves. Then we start to shame someone else. And it's a cycle. And it starts in our side, in ourselves. Something that we have to you know, do for that's ourselves a very, and confidence for ourselves. That's yeah. a very valid point because you'll find out, like you said earlier, you know, I had fat people shaming me I'm fat, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a, it's a, we people either act out abuse or they act in abuse, right? And so if they've been abused, they're more likely to act out abuse on someone else. So, same thing with fat shaming, like you said, you know, usually persons shame because they don't, they don't feel comfortable with themselves, right? That's a certain degree. Right. And I can see that. I can see that very much so. I'm sure I even fall into that sometimes, you know? So, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> Thanks uh, for Cheryl your said, great topic for the new year. <laughs> Stacy said, sweets are my weakness. Yes. And then also, do you think now that women have I a harder do. time keeping weight off because of our hormones and our estrogen and our periods and everything else? And inflammation. Toxins and inflammation. Women have more inflammation than men? No, everyone does. Well, what has happened with just evolution of life and biology in our bodies, you know, trying to change as the world has evolved, is the things that we consume or the things that we put in our bodies and the lifestyles that we now surround ourselves, environmental things, affect us 
mechanically, they affect us um, chemically, our metabolism, all of our systems internally, they affect us. So you think 10 years ago, teenagers and girls, even when we were growing up, when I was growing up, we didn't have cycles until we were, you know, 13, 14. Right. Now children are having cycles. Women, girls are having their cycles at eight, yes. seven years old. Right. The average age for the, the youth to start cycles now are 10. 10 years ago, it used to be the age of 14. And so, yes, hormonally, we are in a whole different place than we were even just five, 10 years ago. Um, and that's based on evolution. That's crazy. But it's also based on what we're putting that's into our That's what I was going to say. System. The milk. I read the, the milk is eat. bad for you. Bad for children. Bad for girls, especially. Well, it's not. I wouldn't say bad. Okay. Bad means that there's no positives to it at all. Okay. I think that the consumption of it, how we use it, and what we're doing to it definitely has to change. Yeah. Um, and until that happens, we as consumers have to be more cognizant about how we consume it and at what quality we're consuming it. And, and until we, the consumers, start changing, then, of course, retailers and wholesalers, because they cater to what consumers want. You know, right. and on top of that, too, that's, just, that's actually just, I never knew this. And uh, it blows my mind that our, especially for girls, they're not having their periods. I mean, they're four years younger having their periods now. Uh, and I do not only agree with you that it's a lot to do with what we're putting into our bodies, but I also believe there's, you know, a lot of things going on, this es this extra est estrogen mimicking hormones right, right. that are in plastics yes. that are, people are taking. And it's not only is it feminizing men, but it's also making women become even more mm -hmm. Uh, of, at a younger age. And so this is like a big experiment. Shop organic. You have to take the steps. And stop drinking children. plastic bottles of water, guys. <laughs> I don't have to tell you. But no, but so, so what do you do? What do you do? Uh, you got yourself through cancer. What kind of cancer did you have? Cervical cancer. Oh, God. Mm. Uh, and so, and and where are you in that process right now? I am in remission. I have been in rem full Ooh. remission now for um, four years. Wow. Um, and I still do platelets because from that, one of the side effects from that was I'm extremely anemic. However, I'm managing it, you know, and I'm, yeah. thank God, thank you, Jesus, yes. I'm still up in this thing. Yes. <laughs> now I can use those experiences to help other people become more aware and change what they're doing so they can be at a lower risk instead of setting themselves up for a higher risk of failure with illnesses. Did you uh did you discover did you discover it like later early? I discovered it early. I was uh, I went for my regular checkup, my female checkup every year, and it came back abnormal. And we did some other tests, and we discovered it. So thank God. I always tell ladies, make so, sure you're getting your annual, yes. no matter what they are. Your teeth annual, your yeah. breast annual, your feet annual. <laughs> Stay in tune with what's happening to your body internally, PSA. as well as what you look like on the outside. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, they just changed it from every year to every five years. Did you know that? Yes, so, I do. I do know that. But you know why? Why? You know, and and don't don't take my word for this. This is my opinion. And after some deep research, it has to do with medical companies. You know, it's like they're not going to get paid for this annually. However, the longer they allow things to linger, the more effects, the more medical care you're going to need, the more medications that you're going to need. It's all a big money game. I know. And it. For me, I do it when you feel like doing it. I'm doing mine every single year. Food, you know, I'm not waiting five years. Right. Food is thine medicine. I mean, do you not believe? Do you not? Do you believe that your food intake has assisted you in re putting your 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 cervical cancer in remission? Oh God. Big time. When I um I was a I, I was a meat eater before that, and after that I changed my diet. You know, massive amounts of change in my diet. And since then, my doctor has said there are so many things in my system that have changed for the positive. But that was one of those choices because meat intake was the highest um, hormonally, um, genetically altered thing that I had in my diet. So when I decided to remove meat, that was the highest genetic altered thing in my diet that I wanted to change. And when I did, it changed so many different aspects. And yeah. removing meat for some people is different. Uh, I didn't do it because I wanted to lose weight. I did it because my digestive system said, yo, 
I can't do this. Mm-hmm. And so I finally began to listen and I was like, okay. <laughs> now I'm not saying that I haven't still suffered anything, but I know my system well enough to know that since I haven't been beating me and it's been five, seven years, uh, five years now, five years for no me, wow. that it has just changed considerable amount. What, what, what and I-, I, I do want to share this ex- experience about me. I went to a farm in Georgia um, for a meat experience and I ate some of the meat there. And let me tell you, I had no problem right. digesting. It went straight through me. I got to do the boo-boo thing and everything. But what I discovered is it was how the meat was being yes. altered that right. makes the difference. Yes. All the things that they're putting in our food. Mm. Yeah, it, You're it, absolutely right. That even yeah. goes for gluten-free. Like, you can yeah. go over to Glyph- Iceland and eat free. bread there yes. if you're gluten-free, and it's fine. And it's not gluten. It's it's the glyphosate in the gluten. That's the problem. It's the glyphosate, it the poisons that we put into our foods. Uh, like you said, the steroids and all the all the chemicals we put into the meats is killing us. Uh, and it's and it's causing all these chronic illnesses, as you're, as you're uh, testing uh, t- testimony, uh, too. So, uh, JQ, what... Um, with with altering you not eating meat, what other advice can you give people to not only um, uh, intake certain types of foods or drinks uh, to um, be a live a healthy life, but also to look good, to look good, whatever that it means to you. Whatever that means to you, the biggest uh, feedback I have for anybody that wants to change their life and move to a better place is consistency, and consistency not in numbers, but consistency in just actually being consistent whether that's one time a week and no meat or 15 times a week and the purest meat whatever your consistent level is that you can accomplish be consistent the second piece of advice that i would say if you want to look good and feel good is be cognizant about what you're putting in your body and what you're doing to your body because it's twofold even if you eat right and you never exercise then you will experience physical discomforts if you do all types of physical work and you never eat right, you may look good, but on the inside, you may be jacked up, which right. is what my situation was. I was looking good. I can have fitness training forever. But because my insides were jacked up, then I could not, you know, I could not dodge the inevitable. Right. Hey, did you by chance hear our questions earlier when we did the whole fat shaming versus motivation? I didn't. Give okay. me one. Give me one. Okay. Otis, give her one. Yeah. Let's see what she thinks. Hey, right. JQ. Okay, so here's the scenario. These are the choices. Um, You constantly invite your wife or husband to the gym. Is that fat shaming or motivation? You constantly invite them. Well, I think it would be how you do it. So if you're saying my husband's name is maybe Jerry. I'm not married, but maybe his name is Jerry. (laughs) (laughs) That's a loaded answer. (laughs) Yes, it is. And I you know... If I'm saying to him, Jerry, get your fat blank up and come to the gym, that's fat shaming. If I'm saying to him, hey, Jerry, I want us to do better about our bodies, come to the gym with me. Mm. So again, I I think fat shaming also is in the delivery because it can be motivational depending on how. See, 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm old school, but I would probably prefer the first one that you said. That's because you were abused as a child. You have neurological pathways that need to be healed, brother. If you think I'm fat, say it. Don't be like, oh, dance around that, you know? But guess what? Get your fat butt in the gym. Come on, let's go. What? But there's also a difference because the first thing he said is, it's your wife or your husband. So... If I'm telling you you're fat, I'm telling you out of love. First of all, I'm not trying to shame you. Right. And then if I'm your wife or your husband, I should be able to tell you you're fat and you don't think I'm shaming you because you know that you're fat. I know that you're fat and we <gasps> want, we would we should want to do better. Um, but <laughs> oh at the same gosh. time, I should know my husband. And if he feels ashamed about his fat, then I definitely probably should not be calling him fat. I should take another approach, baby. I love you so much, and I want you to be fine for this summer cruise. Would you please come to the gym? Why would you? Would you still consider that though? To like, what if somebody just put on a couple extra pounds? Would you still call that person fat, or say you need to get to the gym? You no, no, okay. 
I would not call them fat, but I would definitely tell them they need to be more consistent about their healthy living. Yeah. I, I do. I do think the whole fat definition. I, 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 I will say this: beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, to a certain degree, Ew. yes. But, but at the same time, I mean, we consider people who are overweight and under thirty pounds over the ideal body weight. Ideal body weight being a little extreme. However. Uh, people who are obese are 30 pounds over their ideal body weight. And I have to say, you're looking at 80% of the people in America are overweight and like 60%, 50 to 60% of the people in America are obese. Is this not, See, an, is this not an epidemic? It is. We're the fattest we've ever been in human life. Since we got dropped in the, on this earth from the dust, we are the heaviest, most unhealthy being on earth right now and it's simply because of what we feel or what we deem other people think about us on a survey they were doing um women that were not fat they were pretty healthy they had you know a good life the doctor said they were in good health they looked pretty good they did a survey survey and 52 percent of those women still were not confident with their so-called fat level right how? How are you, you know, you're not overweight, not even by the standard of your doctor, but you still think that you're fat. It, it, yeah. That's shaming yourself. Right. Yeah, that, that, right. That's an anorexia mindset. But also, you know? on top of this, I really got to keep pointing this out. So my sister, for instance, she is like a twig, but she eats freaking queso breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She is not healthier than me. I'm heavier than she is, <laughs> but the doctor tells her she's healthier than me because of the little freaking BMI number. And then I go in there like, oh, you're overweight. I'm like, what? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, Go you, Mandy. Just because you're skinnier than me does not mean you're healthier than me. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, eat vegetables. That is true. But again, health is determined individual. And the definition of one person's health is not always the same as another person's health, which is why we have fat shaming from one extreme to the next. Mm. Because people's mind, how we define our own selves is determined by someone else. Mm. How come the doctor can tell me I'm fat and she's not? Even though we may weigh the same based on a BMI, I'm the one who can run 15 miles. Right. I eat right. Yes. She just has this great metabolism going on. Am I the one or is the doctor the one? Or again, what I said from the beginning, all of these idiosyncrasies that we have are determined by the standards of what someone else is telling us and what we are believing about what other people are saying about us. Yes. You know, it's a great, great point. That is such you a good point. I, I just, um, to me, it, the bottom line is, is health, okay? Uh, it used to be when I was younger, looks, you know, when I was either overweight or somebody, my partner was overweight or whatever, and she, she, her and I would argue about whatever it may be. But as I got older, as I am older now, uh, it's not so much about the overweight. To me, it's about the health because I know the reason why our population or we have obesity is so strong. It's not just because of the lazy American. <clears throat> it really has to do with the inflammation and the and the and the veil and the and the lack of emphasis on healthy foods and the toxins we have in our foods. We're inflamed all our bodies, and then we go when then chronic illnesses come in play. And when you're sick, you can't think about working out and dieting. You know, you're just trying to survive. And right? that could be mental health sick. Like if you're depressed, yeah, it's hard for you sometimes so just to get out of bed. It's know, all but, a mind thing. But my point is, our looks should be more based on our health more so than. Now, I, I, more so like when I was younger, based on how pretty or how handsome somebody is. Well, Americans, humans, let me just retract Americans. Humans are vain. We've been vain since God made us from dust. Mm -hmm. That's not something about our characteristics that we're going to change. But I do think that we need to look inside of ourselves and start defining ourselves by what we want to yeah. feel about ourselves and be honest. You know, I can look in the mirror and I can say, oh, my gosh, I'm fat in my waist or, you know, I have this issue with my hair or whatever. When we have those issues and we get real with ourselves, the only way to change anything about what we don't like is to do something to change it and make it something we do like. And it is so easy for us as humans to do something for someone else. But why is it so hard to do that for ourselves? If my friend calls and says, girl, I need to lose weight. Can you come to this class with me? I'll go to support her. Right. But if I need to get up and go for myself, it's so many excuses. Oh, I have this errand to run. Oh, I don't feel like it. Oh, maybe I'll just try this fat pill. When we think about it for ourselves, it's the hardest thing to do. 
And on a piece of advice, if you can't do it for yourself, then find motivation in another way and make it benefit you. The motivation that drives you even through someone else, as long as it's benefiting you, it's a plus. Amen that to makes that. sense. I agree. Uh, one last question for you. Uh, as a personal trainer, how do you get people motivated to exercise? Every person is different. Um, I usually find that characteristic that I notice that lights their fire or gives them some type of excitement, and I use that as fuel. I used to be, and you know, I used to be guilty of saying to my clients, "Well, you came in the door. You said you were fat. And this is what you wanted to do." Well, that doesn't work with everybody, and um, because we're all very unique individuals, as as a trainer, that's one of my specialties is I find what motivates you and then we do more of that and less of the other stuff. It takes 90 days, not 21. Let oh, say darn it. It takes about that's what I'm 90 doing wrong. days. 90 days. <laughs> okay. Yes. 90 days of, instead of 21 days to begin to create life changing and habits. And until we change our habits and change our ways, which come from our thought patterns, then nothing is going to change. We're still going to be fat and we're going to keep loving it. Body shaming has nothing to do with, I think, what we look like. I think body shaming has to do with how we feel and what type of energy we do for other people. Yes. Thank you so much for being on our show. Go yes, uh, JQ, uh, how can people reach you real quick? On uh, How can people get in touch with you and get your expertise? Oh, Oh, yeah. Well, if you're interested in any personal training or any healthy living advice, um, any nutritional tips or anything, you can reach out to me at all social platforms, J-Q-U-E-N-O-W, or you can hit my Gmail directly, which is J-Q-U-E-N-O-W at gmail.com. That's J-Q now at gmail.com. Wonderful. Thank you. Hey, you thank are beautiful. You. And yes. your eyes are absolutely thank stunning. You. Yes. Thank you. No, You're welcome. No body shaming going on there. <laughs> nope. <laughs> with your with your hub hub eyes you just did. <laughs> All right, guys. When we get back from break, we have our good news segment. And don't forget, Butter Be Rock is going to be in studio live. We're going to show her music video that I got to be in. So you don't want to miss it. Be right back.